Hello, thank you for joining me today. I have been getting this question for years and I've been meaning to make this video for years. Uh, people are always asking me for recommendations for books if you are a tarot beginner. I have a lot of tarot books. I love reading tarot books. In fact, at some point, I'll probably try to make a video just like showing off my tarot book collection. But for today, I want to focus on the three main books that I would personally recommend to someone who is just getting started. Obviously this is very subjective, although I do have a lot of tarot books and I have read a lot of tarot books, I haven't read every single tarot book that exists in the world. So these are just my three favorite that I think are really great for building a foundational knowledge. Number one, this is what I would recommend if you are just getting started and you're brand new, it's called Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning. This actually started as a website which you can still access today. It's learntarot.com. The same material that's covered on the website is covered in the book. Both the website and the book are structured like a course and this was actually the very first thing that I turned to when I started learning tarot. The website does look like it was built in 1995 because it was, but the content is so amazing and I loved the website so much that when I found out there was a book version, I bought it because sometimes you just want to have something tangible that you can hold in your hands, you can write your notes in. What I love about this book and the website is that they are super approachable. They still go into a lot of depth and you get a lot of rich meaning behind the cards, but if you have in the past encountered tarot texts or tarot courses that feel kind of lofty, a little overly metaphysical, or just kind of have a, a tone of uppityness, which some tarot texts do, this does not. It's very approachable, but yet still has such a depth of knowledge. The course itself that's contained within the book was thorough enough that when I went through this on my own as a, kind of an independent study thing, by the time I finished working through this, I felt like I was doing readings pretty confidently. There are a couple of things in this that I would maybe change up now, now that I'm further down my tarot path that I think are maybe not the 100% best for most beginners. The biggest thing is that this uses the Celtic cross as the first spread that you learn. And if you are familiar with tarot at all, you might know the Celtic cross is very big. There's a lot of cards within the spread. So it's a little like baptism by fire when Celtic cross is the first spread that you learn to work with. I think it would be better to start with smaller spreads. Start with three card spreads before you try to tackle something like the Celtic cross. But overall, I love this book. I still reference it all the time, even though it was the very first tarot book that I ever got. When I started learning tarot, another thing that worked for me, not everybody vibes with this, um, but I actually memorized the keywords for every card that Joan Bunning suggests. It wasn't even intentional. It wasn't like I sat down and said to myself, you have to memorize these keywords. It was just something that I did because for me, having the keywords was sort of like a touchstone. It's not that I was using those to lock in a meaning, but it's that those gave me something to kind of start my exploration from, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the second book I want to show you, which is Everyday Tarot by Gail Fairfield. I believe when this book originally came out, it had a different title. I think it used to be called Choice-Centered Tarot, but it's now called Everyday Tarot. As you might be able to see, it's kind of a small little book, but there is so much good information in this one. It's similar to the first book I showed in that if you were a complete and total beginner, you could work with this and it would really guide you through the nuts and bolts of starting to build a tarot practice. My favorite thing about this book, well my two favorite things about this book, one is how simple it is, it's just so elegant in its simplicity, and two, and this is a big thing, so this book I believe was originally published in 1984. So this has been around for quite a while and I feel like Gail Fairfield who wrote this book was ahead of the curve because in this book she talks about things like race in the tarot, class in the tarot, gender in the tarot, 
body images in the tarot. Those are conversations that are happening a lot more in the tarot community these days in 2021. But again, this book came out in 1984 and it was already ahead of that curve of thinking about these broader issues and how they're reflected in the cards that we use. And my second favorite thing in this book is Gail Fairfield's approach to numerology. One kind of common framework for starting to learn tarot is combining what you know about the symbolism of a number with what you know about the symbolism of a suit, especially if you are reading decks that are more pippish. And I've seen a lot of different takes on numerology and what the different numbers mean, but the system and the way that Gail describes the numbers in um, everyday tarot is my very very favorite numerology system. It's been super influential on the way that I read tarot. And third, of course, is 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. A lot of people refer to this one as the tarot reader's bible and honestly I can kind of see why. If I recall correctly this was actually the second book I read right after I finished working through um, Learning the Tarot by Joan Bunning. I got 78 Degrees of Wisdom and this book is amazing. There's not, I feel like I don't even really have to say a lot about this book because so many people have already talked about this one, um, but it is a book that is completely, it does live up to the hype. I think when I read 78 Degrees of Wisdom, it continued to sort of blow my mind open to how much potential there is within tarot. Uh, Rachel Pollack just links tarot to different psychological principles, principles from different myths, there's information from the occult side of things. It's really just such a synthesis of the possibilities of what you can do with a deck of tarot cards. Probably the thing that sticks with me the most from 78 Degrees of Wisdom is the way that Rachel Pollack describes structuring the major arcana by having the fool stand alone and then having three rows of seven and each of those rows has a certain significance. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head if Rachel Pollock was the first person who did that, but that's a really common way that people look at the major arcana now. And looking at the major arcana in that particular framework has been really revolutionary for me and it's something that I still turn to all the time when I'm studying the cards, when I'm thinking about the cards, when I'm doing readings. So that is it. I actually have so many other books. My bookshelf is right in front of me. I can see them that I'm so tempted to show you, but I wanted to keep it to the three for this video for the sake of time. I also want to do a little shameless self-promotion. I have created a free 90-minute course called Foundational Tarot. You can get that by visiting my website, carriemallon.com, sign up for my mailing list, and you will get a link to the free course. It's kind of a synthesis of things I learned from these books and other resources and my own thoughts on tarot. I've also just recently reopened sessions for tarot mentoring. So if you are at any stage of learning tarot, of deepening your tarot practice, and you would like to connect with me, for a one hour session to ask me questions, to get some different perspectives, to get some personalized guidance with your tarot practice. You can find all the details on that on my website as well. I will put the links below the video. Thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you next time.